Welcome back to a Revit video. In this video, we're going to look at shared views. This is a specific tool in the Collaborate tab where we can literally share views with people who don't have Revit. It's something that we can view online, work with them, collaborate, update, and all that. So before we get into it, if you happen to learn something or just end up liking the video, please, please demolish that like button. It really, really helps. Okay, so I'm in just a basic project and I'm in a basic 3D view and we're gonna use this type of a view as our overview for working with shared views. So where, what is it and where is it? Shared views is a way of literally sharing the view that you have and see in Revit and everything that you see here within the view with someone outside the office, outside the industry, outside anywhere. Uh, all they need is the link provided by this shared views tool and they can look at this particular Revit view. It's great for collaboration. It's work. It, it, I would probably use it more for like a real quick, hey, what do you think of this? Instead of like going through the process of exporting some sort of a rendering or a diagram or something, it's just showing a basic update. Okay, so we can find that in the Collaborate tab. And then there's Share Views over here, which is cool. And all this does really is expand this window. And this is completely, you know, it's a completely different window. And so right now, I have no Share Views made, clearly, we can see here. Uh, there's not a ton that I can do here. I can basically search, I can refresh, I can make a new one, and then that's about it. Obviously, if you want to learn more, click that. It's going to give you a lot more information than what this window gives you, but my hope is that you learn enough in this video that you don't need to deal with that. So, of course, we want to make a new shared view and work from that. So, new shared view. Uh, the model has not been saved. Let's clearly save this, which is kind of weird that it says that, but regardless, we'll save it and then move on. So, with this saved... I then basically it, it wants me to save because I have to have what they would call the latest model before I can make a view. And not only can I do that when I make a view, but I have to do that later on, but you'll see. So new share view. So, okay, well, this is great. I, I love that. I don't get like 3d view one or default view one or anything like this. So I'm going to call this share view 3d, which again, probably isn't the best title for a view, but for the sake of this video, it will work just fine. So, I am a big proponent of naming things correctly, especially in Revit, because it's so important for those learning Revit, who's a, those just using Revit, working collaboratively, that's so important. So here we go. So I'm going to click share. So immediately it says extracting, and whenever this is ultimately done, it will populate here, and I'll be able to see it and do more. And so what it's doing now is it's, in a way, exporting this view, which is not just like, it's not just a static image, which is cool, but it's exporting that to the internet. And it will provide us with the link that we can then share with everyone. We're not going to end up sharing with anyone, but we will go to the link ourselves and be able to work on it, view it from there. And then as we make changes, we can update that and that's it. So really cool stuff. So we're going to, I will come back whenever this shared view has been uploaded and we can go from there and look at, well, forget that. We're not even going to cut. Look, it's done. That was really quick. Okay. So cool. With this, we can see what, we can actually work with. So we've got the date that is created, which is today. And then this expires. I was reading online 30 days, but apparently 31. I don't know. <laughs> That's just fine. And then I have got the three dots here, which are settings. So look, I can view in browser. Again, I can copy the link. So that's great. I can copy this. Obviously, I can view this in the browser and then copy it from there. I can choose to extend this, which, which we will see here in a second. And then ultimately delete it when I'm done. So let's go ahead and view in browser. And so it's gonna pop up right here. And so we get the Autodesk viewer. We might, you might be familiar with that, might be not, but look, there's the name of our share view and look, you know, so the orientation of the view does not matter. You can clearly see I can get everything that I need to in this actual view. I can see everything. And if I will say, if you've used BIM 360 and you've used it for more than just uploading your models, you probably used the 3D views and looked at actual 3D views online, which is, this is very similar. I will say there's a lot more tools here that we can use um, that's also probably a lot easier to use if you're unfamiliar with things. So I can click home, which is going to take us to just where we were on when we started this, uh, open this link, but I can just use the view cube like normal. Um, I can fit this to the screen so I can see everything. I can choose to pan around instead of orbit around, zoom, whatever. First person's cool. Um, it's going to give us all of this information. Um, 
and then I can literally just start moving around, which is really nice to see. Now, obviously, I'm on the second floor right now, and, you know, it's just, it's really nice. If you're someone who's not a Revit user, uh, this is really easy to get, really easy to understand. This is not a flashy model by any means, but nonetheless, you, you get the idea of space very quickly. And if you're in a remote place and you're not a Revit user, especially you're a client or someone who just wants to see a quick change, this is a great way. So regardless, I don't like first person necessarily in, in this type of a setting so much. So I can always zoom out and get back out to this this full view. I can fit it and everything. The cool thing is here, I can measure if maybe your client's like, oh, you know, how wide is that door? Well, <laughs> client can get a good idea that, you know, it's about five feet, four and a half, five feet. Cool stuff. Uh, it's something you don't have to do necessarily if you're a client or someone just flying through the model. Yeah, you can get those quick dimensions without bothering the architect or something like that. Section, I can pull a section here, which is cool. Um, really, any one of these planes work really well. I can always rotate this. Uh, any way that we want. So this is so helpful in that I can really see anything that I want to. And in section view, like in some ways, this is kind of easier than Revit um, and how I'm able to push and pull this and, and see different kind of cuts. It's like really, really great stuff. And so I can just simply turn that off to get everything back out. Um, I can explode, which is very interesting. <laughs> this is literally everything. <laughs> I find this quite entertaining to use. Um, I don't know if this, I mean, it's cool because you can actually see these individual parts. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is just really funny just to play with. So you can get an idea of what it's like to explode the building. Cool. Um, not the most useful thing, but kind of cool. But something really nice is, you know, markups. Like maybe we decide um, that we want to pull this window out. I don't know. Um, but I can literally just say, you know, pull this out and then, you know, I can add text. You know, pull the window out. Again, these are things you can do. You don't have to do. Um, but the nice thing is that this is something that a client or someone who's not a Revit user could do. And what it's done essentially is it's taken a screenshot of this. And then we can then basically be done with that. So I'll click save. And so we have these markups. And then not only that, but they show up as specific comments, which is really great. And so not only that, I get like literally a new link and then we can go from there. We can basically start to update this on our side in the Revit side. So with all, I mean, we've covered all these tools, which is they're very simple, really easy to use, really nice. Um, we have different views. Obviously, if you have multiple views from the same model. They will be populated here, and you can basically jump between them as a client or as someone else who's a non-Revit user. Uh, model browser, if there are different models, of course. Properties, you know, I can, I don't need to worry about that. Um, there aren't any properties to display, of course. Looking at the settings, there's all kinds of settings here. Um, most of these I won't, wouldn't really care about. Smooth navigation, like, you know, I don't know. I like it a little more precise. Any of this, you can change all of this. Uh, units, feet, you know, any of this kind of stuff, which is great. Navigation, you can change this if you want. Uh, there's a ton here. Appearance, yeah. Ground reflection, I don't know. Environment, thing, things like this. That Most of these aren't even worth messing with, but it just, it is what it is. It's there for you. Um, and then finally, comments, which we saw before, we can see that new comments populate here. And uh, obviously, we can go to that specific markup. We can just close the markup. Like, there's a ton that we can do here. And so uh, let's go back to Revit. I'll pull this aside. As soon as I refresh it, I can see I actually have a comment. And that comment we're going to see is actually that screenshot. And whenever I click on this in Revit, it's going to take me again kind of to that link, which whatever. I That's perfectly fine. I can... It's going to pull up everything, and then I can click on it here and see exactly what I'm supposed to see. Obviously, we just saw this because we're the one who made it, but normally we wouldn't be the one making this. And so I can choose to pull this out or whatnot. I'm not going to pull this out, but I'm going to say, okay, yeah, this has actually been resolved or um, not going to pull out window. I'm, that's fine. Things like that. I'm not going to pull out this window. Okay, and then I can post this. And then I can choose to show that as resolve, which is great. And so very cool. That's easy. And so with that, I can actually, I can see my resolved, which is literally what I just put here. I'm not going to pull this window out. Um, it has been resolved. I can hide that. Great. And so whenever we just view this in browser again, basically after we've updated it, then we can see where it is, which I haven't made any model updates at this time, but I can come back to comments and see that, 
oh yeah, there's one resolved and I can see that. So this is something you can track and follow as a client or someone who's not a Revit user. You can even share this, which is cool. This just kind of know this is a public thing. So it really, anyone can have this um, once someone has it, which whatever, that's not a huge deal. But what I want to do is actually go ahead and make a change, things like that. So maybe we take this uh, fireplace and we go ahead and just make this 20, you know, 30 feet, 35 feet, just significantly different. And so clearly that's higher. This is a bit too high for a chimney, but whatever, that, that works. And so basically this is telling me that, I okay, I need to update this. Like, hey, client, I look what I've done. I've updated the chimney, all this kind of thing, things like that. So everything I've seen online and anywhere about shared views says nothing about updates, which is really a kind of unfortunate. That's just... Uh, kind of a big part to me. Like, I'm just curious why that wouldn't uh, follow through. And what I mean is that even whenever I sync this, I just sync this, I'm not going to see that update with the chimney in this case in the shared view, which is kind of silly. You know, you would think it would update the view, but it doesn't. But nonetheless, I want to show you that it doesn't. I just synced and I can see, well, clearly this is still the short chimney. But, you know, I, it's not the end of the world. It's just something yeah, I wish I could see. So basically what I'm going to do now is just make an updated view. So this is not the way I'd want to do it, but maybe this is a another reason why I have not used this. So basically it's making this updated and we can basically compare them to in just a second. Um, but I'll cover the other tools here. So we can obviously show the resolve, which is all the comments, which is cool. I can view it in a browser, which we just did. We can just simply copy the link and then email that to anyone or whatever we need to. Um, extend is going to literally extend the remaining time. So as it says, this expires in 31 days. Clicking this is going to do nothing because I can still see I have a month left. And then obviously we know delete, delete. Um, as soon as I delete it here, that link is basically just going to go offline. So it just won't exist. And uh, that's kind of what you would want. And, and so refreshing doesn't really do anything, unfortunately. Obviously, if I make a new view and I refresh, I'll, I'll then get my view to show up here. Okay. Um, but so there's my updated chimney. Cool. And then I'll just view that in browser, which is going to be the basically the exact same thing that we saw before, but with the updated chimney. So I will let you take from this what you will. Um, obviously, so you can see the two versions we have, which it's kind of silly. You know, I, I wish it, I mean, it literally is. It's almost like a snapshot of a view and you work through that view and things are updated in the sense that you can uh, collaborate back and forth using comments. You know, I mean, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. What I would like to see, and please let me know in the comments if I'm missing this somehow, but what I'd like to see is the ability for this specific link and specific view to update together. So like you can see an update made. So for example, if the client or someone says, hey, raise that chimney five feet, and we go back into Revit, then we change it five feet, and then basically it updates the, not only the view, but the link, the, the model based on the model and everything, from the changes showing the updated changes in the view the client can then say okay great or like oh no look at this now or, you know things like that uh, basically working through a model or a at least one view in a constantly updating view instead of making a new one making a new one but you know obviously it they both work just fine because we can get the same effect it's just more to track through and at the end of the day it, it's not a huge thing it's not a big deal um just know that there will be things that you'll have to work through like that with mul multiple views, and that just means multiple links, and so you're sending links again. So hopefully we can work through that, and because I'd like to see that updated. I would be more apt to use the shared views if that were the case. If I didn't have a full list of the basically the same view as new changes came into play, but regardless. So that will do it for shared views. Please let me know what you think of them, because... I haven't used them a lot, but I could see where they could be useful. Uh, you know, let me know how you think they might be used and if you would use them at all. So, that, again, that will do it for the shared views. If you did happen to like the video or just learn something, please demolish that like button. It helps me out quite a lot, quite a lot. Sure does. So, see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day, and thank you very much for watching.